hello, 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 ho. Um, this is actually, I think, the first time I've ever done uh, live on YouTube, which is pretty crazy because I always brag about um, having started my career on YouTube and I haven't been back in a while. Um, but I wanted to start doing um, a lot of these videos uh, because we are back into election cycle. And when I first got into um, doing YouTube videos, it was because we were in the midst of an election cycle and I felt that there were so many um, narratives that were being tossed around that were impacting black people. And specifically, actually, quite ironically, um, when I started um, my YouTube career, one of the first videos that went viral was of me attacking the Black Lives Matter narrative about police brutality. And what I called it at that time was an election strategy. That was actually uh, the notorious video that I did at UCLA um, that caught Kanye's attention. Um, and he, um, I think, shared it or tweeted me or whatever it was. And um, I went viral in the, in the more cultural space. So it was a really crazy year for me. Uh, but my interest has always been in about realizing how race is something um, that has become an election strategy for the left. So you will notice that there is never more racial unrest, never more racial topics trending than just before an election cycle. And I said that it happens every four years, um, every single, like it's right on time. You could almost set an alarm for how um, on time it is for the media to start drumming up the race narrative, right? So let's just talk about what has been trending in the last week, right? I mean, we can even do the last 48 hours because this is how obsessed right now the American mainstream media is with starting a race war. Okay, let's start with light topics, right? Today, uh, Jimmy Fallon was trending under the hashtag um, Jimmy Fallon is over party. You guys may, may have caught that hashtag on Twitter. And when I looked to see what this hashtag was about, I thought maybe Jimmy Fallon had done something or said something silly um, on his late night talk show that he needed to apologize for. Nope. It turns out that Jimmy Fallon was trending under cancel Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Fallon is over party because somebody dug up a video from 20 years ago in which he dresses up, I believe, as Chris Rock on Saturday Night Live and he therefore painted his face a darker color. And they said, this is an example of Jimmy Fallon doing blackface. He is a racist now and he should be canceled. This was trending, okay, out of nowhere, 20 year old video. First and foremost, this video wasn't something he was trying to hide, obviously. He was in a Saturday Night Live skit. Um, the year 2000 is when it was shot, which means that when Jimmy Fallon shot this video and came out on Saturday Night Live, people laughed. Nobody thought it was a racist thing. People thought it was funny. This is why it caused no outrage in the year 2000. But fast forward to 2020 election cycle. Fast forward to 2020, the year when we can no longer take a joke where we try to find every single excuse to be offended. When I say we, I'm not talking about just black people. I'm talking about women. I'm talking about men. I'm talking about people of all races that are actually waking up looking for reasons to be offended. It makes it makes no sense. Why, why are we trying to be offended? And why are we having to get into time machines and travel back to the year 2000? Are there not enough things for you to pretend to be offended about in this year? Okay, pointedly ridiculous. Anybody trying to suggest that Jimmy Fallon had had bad intent or was trying to be a bad guy? Oh, well, he shouldn't have done it. You know, there's this whole debate. This even this blackface debate has taken off in the last couple of years. Okay, I remember when Megyn Kelly got fired for saying truthfully um, that when she was a kid, people used to dress up, and as long as they were actually trying to be the characters that they dressed up as, and they were painting their faces in that color, it was considered okay. I remember the same thing when I was a kid. If kids, if a girl wanted to be Pocahontas and tried to make her skin darker to have long pigtails, people did that. And nobody thought this was this big thing of kids trying to be racist on Halloween day. But again, our culture has been growing increasingly more offended, which is bizarre. You know, the less and less our society becomes um, racist, the more and more over these last 60 years, people are now being offended and seeing race issues everywhere. So that was trending number one. Then we had the um, incident where Lana Del Rey was trending. For those of you who don't know who Lana Del Rey is, um, she is a uh, musical artist who had a, a smash first album. She sang at Kanye and Kim's wedding um, and she's been putting out new music. And apparently in some of the music um, that she's been putting out, feminazis, all of the women that freak out about feminist issues are angry with her because she portrays, you know, her relationship in a way that they say sends the women who's moving back 20 years. And so she 
in a, in a statement said, you know, you guys say I send the women's movement back 20 years for talking about my relationships that I have and men. And yet you have people like Beyonce and Nicki Minaj who, you know, will put their bodies on the Internet and get a number one hit. Oh, but she accidentally picked people of the wrong color when she said this. Beyonce and Nicki Minaj are both black. So she began trending. People want Lana Del Rey to be canceled because somehow she was attacking black women. And so she's a racist too. Throw her in the Jimmy Fallon pile. She needs to be canceled. That's just in the last 48 hours in terms of pop, what has been trending. Now let's go to the bigger media topics, which everybody cannot get enough of an election cycle. Black people dying, black people being upset, black people being videotaped in any uncomfortable situation with a white person, whether it's in a dog park in Central Park, like this woman who has just lost her job and her dog in a span of 24 hours because she went trending, or whether it's uh, an issue of police brutality, I will be forthcoming with you and tell you that I have not, I know very little about this situation of the guy that happened today, um, apparently dying um, under a police who was apparently strangling him. I think the video starts when the police officer is already on top of him. You guys already know I'm too intelligent for me to judge something by seeing half a video. I have no idea why the police were there. I don't know if this guy was resisting arrest. I'm not going to issue a verdict like the rest of people that are reactive and emotional because they cannot wait 24 hours to just get all of the information before you make a statement. So we have that going on, which is obviously just following the, the, the case of Ahmaud Arbery, which happened a couple of weeks ago. And then we've got the guy in Central Park who's filming a woman who did threaten her dog. All right. He told you exactly what happened in the park. I am getting this information from him, his Facebook page. OK, uh, Christian Cooper's Facebook page about Amy Cooper, where he describes exactly what happened. He saw a dog. OK, playing in the park without a leash on and this woman with a mask on. And he was upset because the dog was playing in the plantings, like there was grass and flowers that are planted nicely in this area of the park. And the dog was messing it up. And as a bird watcher, he got upset. He walked over to her and he told her that her dog was not supposed to be in this region of the park. And to which she said, you know, my dog, all the dog runs are shut down. As you guys know, New York City is still under lockdown. So basically there are tons of areas that you can't go into. And he told her, well, you can take your dog to this area in the ramble or whatever he said. And she did not take her dog to that area. She did not have her dog on a leash. And he pointed to the sign where she was supposed to have her dog on the leash. They obviously weren't getting along, at which point he said to her, OK, if you're going to do what you want to do, then I'm going to do what I'm what I want to do. And you're not going to like what I'm going to do. Ominous, an ominous statement. Any person that is being legitimate and being honest and assessing the situation knows that if you were a dog owner and somebody said you're not going to like what I'm about to do and then proceeded to, as he did, call her dog over to him by his own admission. OK, and then reaches into his pocket. She freaked out. I would have thought he was trying to take my dog in New York City. There's a ton of crazy people. Anybody tells you you're not going to like what I'm about to do and then calls my dog who's off of a leash on him, I would have thought he was going to steal it. I don't know what she thought, but she instantly said, don't touch my effing dog, went to grab it, at which point he then whips out his phone and starts recording. In my opinion, he wanted attention, plain and simple, escalated the situation by saying something. I think she obviously could have just put the dog on the leash, but she wasn't doing it, which made her a Karen. Him even over, over, over there telling her, your dog isn't supposed to be here. Here's the region that your dog's supposed to be in this area. He's a Karen and you got two Karens in the park, a situation that escalated beyond what it needed to be. And her phone call, which she said an African-American man is threatening me. And that's where the Internet exploded and called her a racist and demanded that because she was holding her dog aggressively by the collar, clearly trying to get control of it because she thought this dude was going to do something to her dog. Now they have her out to be an animal abuser and all these crazy things and her whole life is ruined because... It happened during an election cycle and people are bored at home in quarantines and just cannot be realistic about the fact that this is a mundane, stupid park scenario and it never needed to be taken this far or escalated to this point. But what are you going to do? Everybody needs to pretend to be upset about something at all times. OK, so let's just talk about like Black Lives Matter. All right. Let's just talk about the race narrative. Anybody think it's weird that after Trump won in 2016, before he won, Every single day, Black Lives Matter on CNN talking about black issues, all of these videos that were on the on Facebook being mined, like we're seeing right now of instances with black people with white people only. It's like, you know, there's never any other issue they want to show you. You'll never see black on black stuff. You'll never see white on white stuff. It is specifically white on black stuff that is showed perpetuated every single day in the media in 2016 until Trump won the election. 
And then it was just like disbarred, right? Then the media was obsessed with just getting Trump out of office. Every single day they're on him, they're trying to impeach him. They're trying to say that the media, that it was hacked Russian collusion. None of the airwaves, none of the media was dedicated to what was going on in black America or black deaths because we were no longer needed, okay? Just, let's just call it what it is. We were no longer needed. The reason why this narrative is drummed up every four years is because the most important vote to sustain the Democrat party is the black vote. The best way to get black Americans to vote mindlessly for Democrats is to continually tell them that they are being oppressed by racist, rich, white people and a systemic a systemic oppression, okay? And then getting a bunch of Democrat candidates up there like puppets, like we're seeing right now, Kamala Harris, all of them jumping in there saying, this is horrendous. Kamala Harris suddenly cares about black lives. Let's just talk about her record uh, in terms of locking up black men, probably killed more of them in prison. Um, but apparently she's at the forefront and talking about these horrible things that black America is going through. But where was she on all of these issues in the last three and a half years that Trump's been in office? Everyone just went away. Nobody cared about all, all of these black issues. You want to do a test to really understand how ridiculous the media narrative about, and I am going to answer some of your questions. Ready? Go online to any any site. Like I actually just did this on Daily Mail. Go just read the headlines, and you are going to see that the only time race is actually brought up on the headlines is when it has to do with a white person doing something to a black person. So the headlines will literally read, white cop. Uh, kills black man, right? Then you go to the headline below and it'll say, woman killed by her husband, right? And you look and you look at the pictures and you go to the article and it's two black people, right? Man shot in in alleyway, right? And no race mentioned, you look and it's a, it's a black man that shot a white man, right? Never mention race. They will never, literally, I want you to go do this experiment right now when you get off of this. Actually go look, okay? and see how the headlines are portrayed. They will never, ever, ever mention race in the headline unless it is specifically something that has to do with a black, per with a black person who is being allegedly victimized by a white person, right? That is how you know the media is trying to control and drop a race war. Lana Del Rey actually said in her comeback today when she, didn't, when she did a video just disputing all the absurd things calling her racist, she said, people are dead seriously trying to um, inspire a race war. And that's what they're trying to do, right? So you get people like me who catch heat because I don't jump into it, right? I will not be malleable. I'm not going to be a slave to a media narrative. I'm not going to go every three years when uh, the media pretends to care about black people. So we're running around emotionally and issuing statements about how horrendous something was and saying, oh, that somehow makes me a real black person because I stood up for justice. And then we're dead quiet when there's tons of actual horrible things going on within our own community. Um, we're dead quiet when this stuff is going on, when it's not an election cycle. Nobody says anything. Nobody pursues these stats, these stories, nothing, okay? So I'm calling out this fake stuff from black America, white America, the media. Nobody cares at all unless we are in the midst of an election cycle. And that is just the truth. I had somebody step to me and say, oh, Candace, you know, give me one example of you ever speaking about a time when a black person was a victim. Actually, I did that literally last year when I spoke about an issue that nobody wanted to talk about, which was that nine-year-old boy, Tysh Tyshawn Lee from Chicago, who was literally in a basketball court doing ap after school, couldn't have been more innocent, did nothing wrong, was lured down an alleyway by another black man, of course, which is why this, never, this was never a big deal. Nobody cared. There's no Black Lives Matter. There's no marching because black lives don't matter when, when they're ended by other black people, right? And he got shot in the head and killed point blank because the man who killed him wanted to get even with his uncle or his father over a crime. I, that issue was something that literally broke my heart when I read it. I typically don't speak about most cases, but that case, I'm sitting here, this is an innocent child victim and nobody cared. You wanna know why? Because it didn't happen in an election year and didn't, it didn't happen at, you know, by a white person, right? So we're not supposed to care. You, you think that black people that don't instantly respond to snippets and clips on the media do so because, don't do so because they, they're not black, right? That's, that's the narrative that's out there. Maybe they don't do so because we're smart. Right. Maybe it's just because we're intelligent enough and we have a high enough emotional IQ to know when someone's trying to manipulate our, our emotions to get a reaction from us, to make something viral. Right. To deliver a point so that people can stump on our issues, which is what happens every four years. Let me answer some of these um, chats, guys. Just, you know, I'm, I'm really, really new to this, so I, I do not know. 
how to do this, but oh, oh okay, I see. Um, uh, to Shauna Lerner, I hope I'm saying that right. Shauna Lerner or Shauna Lerner, thank you uh, for the super chat. Uh, to John Nolan, thank you for the super chat. To Ransomware, um, thank you for the super chat and for saying Candace Owens uh, for uh, Senate. A uh, question uh, or from Greatness81, if the Democrats lose 20% of the black vote, they're finished. I believe they will lose more than 20% this election cycle. Um, I, I think that they definitely are losing the black vote. Um, they definitely are not going to win in uh, the margins that they won in in um, 2016. Um, and a fatal loss would be just five points. So if, if the Democrats, those of you that don't know, dip below 85% um, in terms of the black vote, their party is finished. So it is very, very serious for them. It's the reason that they're importing so many illegals across the border because they're trying to turn illegals into the next permanent underclass. Um, it's the reason why they stumped really hard um, after Trump won on uh, illegal immigrants and the border issues and all those things because to them it is never about caring about the people at the border or caring about black people being shot. It is always about looking at a voter market and trying to do something and trying to get people to believe um, that you're their superheroes. Um, so great comment. I totally agree with that. Um, uh, how can I schedule an interview with you? <laughs> you have to just email my website. Uh, thank you guys. You guys, anybody have any questions? I'm, there's probably a place I could literally go to for that, but I don't know where to go through. 20 minutes ago before your live stream, we are at some bricks. I just want to say thank you for the super chat. Um, Candice, when you're done running for office, how about you come to Canada and run again? We'd love to have you here. Thank you, Nathaniel. Um, but I'm staying as far away from Justin Trudeau as possible. <laughs> you guys got bigger fish to fry. Um, Candace, thank you for being a warrior for the truth. How do we fight back against social media shadow banning when all you're trying to do is tell the truth? Um, so as you guys know, I think that the only way we're going to win against uh, the social media giants is for us to start actually suing them. Um, Congress needs to push through legislation um, to start looking at these people um, as either you know, they try to be publishers, they say they're just utilities, um, but they're acting like publishers. If they are utilities, every single person should have the right to be on their platforms. Verizon can't say because you're a conservative, um, you're not allowed to send through phone calls. And um, so I'm personally right now pursuing Facebook. Um, I know that PragerU is pursuing Google. Um, and I think there are a few, a few people that are taking on Twitter, but I think it's going to take time, but it's going to happen through the court system. Um, according to my brother-in-law, I only support you because you're a race trader. How do I respond to that? Uh, I would respond by telling your brother that he is definitely a racist. Um, <laughs> if you think that a black person having a different opinion is an example of them betraying their race and you're a white American, then you think that you know how all black people think, uh, which would make you a racist. I disagree with all different kinds of black people. I disagree um, with people in, some people in my family, groups of people in my family. Um, on various topics, topics and issues, we have a debate because we're all, we all challenge each other to think. We don't think um, alike. Um, uh, we support different candidates. Um, I would say now my family is much more on the conservative leaning side altogether just because they've seen me go through what I've gone through in the press and the absurd things that the press will do and try to caricature certain people, um, you know, and pretend like there's some right way to be black. I mean, we've even seen it with conservatives. We've seen it with black conservatives recently who are now trying to say, oh, I'm see, I'm a real black conservative uh, because I'm even out here arguing for Ahmaud Arbery. Like just because a bunch of people do something and rea are reactive and stupid and emotional does not mean that I am now required to be reactive and stupid and emotional. I have a higher emotional IQ um, than a lot of people. And I, first of all, ask questions and ask why, why, why is the media spinning this web? Why are you trying to get me to react and why are you doing it so aggressively? So I just want to put that out there because I know a lot of people were asking me um, questions about what I think about what this person thinks or what that person thinks or why I disagree with that person. They are different people. They are entitled to their thoughts and their ideas. Um, I Liberals can't bully me. Conservatives can't bully me. I have my own mind. Um, there's a difference between a leader and a follower. So I don't look to see how many people um, uh, agree with me in order to state my opinion or try to create little clicks of people that agree with me to show that somehow I'm right. I think that's, that's the, a sign of weakness. And I would say that um, gosh, there's some people up here. How do I get to this? Ah, Candace Farmer for Senate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deborah Migliori. Thank you, um, Ransomware. Thank you, uh, uh, JFP85. Uh, Nathaniel Charles, thank you. Um, Bethel, you said, what is your perspective on movies and shows which portray racial um, tension like Scandal or The American Sun? I think um, in general, 
uh, what we're seeing is that the media uh, is, does not just mean the news. It also means um, Netflix. It means the documentaries that they run. You'll remember in 2016, it was all about the Central Park Five um, and all, all that whole narrative because they were running on the fact that, you know, Trump didn't support the Central Park Five and took out an ad. So then next thing you know, we've got a million dollar production dedicated to the Central Park Five. Um, this game is this game of the media being controlled and manipulating emotions is a lot deeper than you think. Uh, what it comes down to is, is simple brain brainwash, right? You see something enough times, you accept that to be a reality, even if it's not a reality. It is not a reality um, that Black Americans are being, uh, you know, gunned down or in situations where police are overly aggressive and more than white people or Hispanic people. You can look at the numbers yourself. Uh, they just aren't there. Um, it happens more often to white people and to Hispanic people by rape, but we don't know any of their names. And I think that that's incredible. Think about the fact that you can name so many Black Americans um, who were killed at, at the hands of police officers. Um, uh, off the top of your head, right? Uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, Amar Arbery, I guess you could count just because of the he was a former police officer if you wanted to. Um, and you, you can go on and on and on. Philando Castile, you can't do the same thing if somebody asks you to name white men that were killed. By police officers or Hispanic men that were killed by police officers because the media doesn't care about those stories because they don't feed into the leftist media beast. Um, and it's it's sad that people can't pick up on that, that people don't see that Black America hasn't figured out that what they're really doing is setting us up for failure, right? Um, there is no other community, no other community, even when horrific things happen, right, um, that do the amount of, of protesting um, and screaming and getting ourselves arrested um, and, 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 and yelling and hollering that Black America does. Let me give you an example. So recently this year, there's been a major increase in um, Black Americans um, murdering Jewish Jewish Americans, um, especially in the cities. It was, it's, it's been a major issue. You guys might recall the, the rabbi who was stabbed in the head. He was actually at a service and a, a black man who was disturbed came in and stabbed and, and killed him. He just stabbed him in the head. You maybe recall rabbis getting together and holding a vigil for this death. You do not recall any boycotting, protesting, any Jewish Black Panthers, um, if, if they exist, um, marching through the streets demanding justice. You do not recall um, that back-to-back -back madness and that coverage. Um, why is that? Why, why is it only Black America does that? Hispanic Americans, if they die um, and, and the, the killing is unjust, why do you not see that portrayed in the media or, or see Hispanic Americans gathering and doing that thing? What is it about Black Americans that we do that? If you're going to say it's, it's you know, it's our history in this, history in this country, um, you know, there's been tons of discrimination in this country. None of us have lived through it. So please don't give me the BS and and, and all of this stuff about pretending, oh, it's, you know, slavery and, and the Jim Crow laws and all of this stuff. Because the truth is people that lived through that didn't act like this. They didn't. The rioting started after the Civil Rights Bill of 1964. The riots that happened across the cities um, ha started happening after we actually gained our freedom um, in a legislative piece. When Jim Crow laws were put to an end is when Black people started rioting, right? So why is it that free Black people in this country are more riotous and more angry, right, than the Black people that were actually living under systemic oppressions? I, I can't understand that. I, I can't wrap my head around it. Why do we need to pretend that we are living in the 1850s? And why is that a token, somehow a token of our Blackness, right? The angrier you are shows that you're Black. No, it doesn't. I don't subscribe to Black militancy. I wouldn't, if I lived back in the day of, of Jim Crow laws and unrest, I, I would have been a Martin Luther King Black. I just don't believe in it. I don't buy into it. I don't see how it helps advance any causes. I don't see how uh, not being able to intellectualize something, but demanding that something be tried in the media uh, makes us look better or helps to uh, put, you know make issues better. I just, none of it seems good for the future, for the present, and does it does no justice for the past. Um, so that's your that's your long-winded answer for why I think that they put things um, on the media. Uh, let's see. I have Blacks don't get the real news. They are run by race hustlers and so-called leaders, which is 100% true. Uh, you will find that when these stories are perpetuated, it's always the same suspects. Um, I was glad to see finally... Um, uh, sh that guy, Sean, whose last name I can't even think of at the moment, trending on Twitter because people are realizing that every time there's a death, he fundraises and nobody knows where the money goes. 
fund does campaigns for Maude Arbery, fundraises uh, for every black person that he says dies unjustly. And he's he's probably scammed millions of dollars um, from black America and he's gotten away with it, right? Meanwhile, if I give somebody an opinion that's different and goes against the grain, which I always have an opinion that goes against the grain because I think against the grain, they'll be like, you're grifting, it's for money. What money am I earning by having a different opinion? When I send a tweet of my opinion about the Ahmaud Arbery case, right? How am I gaining any money? Did I put together a fundraiser and say, support me because I have this position? No, I don't do that. That's actually people on the left that do that. They fundraise off of these issues, okay? I'm giving you my opinion because I don't think that there is a way forward for Black America unless we pause and we start thinking and we stop becoming the most reactive race in America, okay? We are behind and lagging behind every race in every statistical category. And let me not even say race because I'm, it's not just being black that makes you lag, right? Because Nigerian Americans are ahead of black Americans. They come to this country from Africa. Caribbean Americans are ahead of, Amer of black Americans when they get to this country. So all of this BS about it's, we can't get ahead because of systemic oppressions. You're gonna have to explain why when black immigrants come to this country, they're able to get ahead of black Americans. It is our culture. I genuinely believe that we have a rotten culture. I've been doing a ton of reading lately, obviously, because I've been in quarantine. And, you know, something, I, I read a, a quote uh, from Confucius about how if you want to see, like, and I'm, I'm summarizing here, but if you want to see the heart of a civilization, listen to its music, right? And it sort of woke me up to the fact that everything that Black America has become is because of Black, is because of black culture, this culture that we've cultivated, and we call it being Black. But in fact, it was created by white people, right? It was created by racist white people, right? We can throw on a track and listen to something about baby mamas and broken homes and how many hoes somebody has. That wasn't created by black people. That was not the music that we were creating. That, that wasn't Motown, right? We used to be about family togetherness. That broken down family that you're seeing that's portrayed in the airwaves now, um, that's coming from Jim, that's coming from uh the legislation that was pushed through in the 1960s that broke down the black family, right? And then suddenly they broke down the family, they removed the fathers from the home, right? Via the Great Society Act. And now they tell us that that's ours, right? So if you if you don't celebrate that, we should be celebrating that, this is who we are. Speaking it down in, in, in broken language, right? Uh, now a lot of people will say like Ebonics, they're teaching in classes that this is black culture, this is how we speak, it's just how we communicate with one another. No, 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 that is not how we communicate with one another. Who made you think that not speaking proper English was how we communicate with one another? Even that, all of that started in the late 1960s, again, with the Black Militancy Act, with people changing their names back to their African names, developing their own slang and their own talk. I was studying David Hume. You guys don't know him. He's you know one of the greatest um, Scottish writers, philosophers. And uh, David Hume, <laughs> Scottish people were severely behind the English people, um, just in terms of everything. And David Hume inspired and uplifted and challenged the Scottish people by saying, if we want to get ahead, we have to learn English. So he turned around uh, to, to the Scottish tribes and said, we need to learn English, we need to master the English language. And they did that. And in a matter of years, matter of decades, uh, the Scottish people passed the, the English people um, in engineering and in the sciences. And it's because they challenged themselves to be better, not to be worse. They didn't pretend um, that somehow having a broken language, having broken down families was, was a symbol of who we are. And that is so unique to black America. I won't subscribe to it. If, if, if that people say that's a, that's how you have to be black. That's how you have to be black. Listen to your psychological conditioning. If to be black, you can't speak in proper English or you're acting white, right? To be black, you instantly have to jump up like a fucking trained chimpanzee, excuse my language, like a, like a trained chimpanzee every single time the media runs a story and act angry and riot and talk about how pained you were to see this happening to black people, but keep your mouth shut right? When it happens black on black, because if you talk about the black on black crime, you're a race traitor, right? To be black, you need to celebrate LeBron James. You, you got to say that you want to be a, a, a football star, right? LeBron James, the greatest, right? When you see someone like Dr. Ben Carson, or Dr. Connelly's Rush, you call that person a coon because they betrayed you. You want to know why? Because they're talking about economics. They, they, they graduated and they've got tons of degrees. And they, they're not being black enough. Don't listen to them. Listen to LeBron James when he throws in a Beto cap and tells you that we're literally being hunted down. Right. Because because he, he's not educated. Right. Celebrate that. That's our hero. He represents us. That is what being black is in 2020. That is what we are told that being black must be in 2020. And we are then routinely told that we should be ashamed if we don't subscribe to that. I do not subscribe to that. OK, I don't subscribe to that. 
My family doesn't subscribe to that. The children that I will have one day will not subscribe to that. Okay, that is not an example of black greatness, not an example of American greatness. It's an example of a broken culture that has been fostered by people that were racist in the 1960s and is being perpetuated now by people that are race hustlers in 2020. Okay. And that is the media. That is the black people that stand there and take the bait every single time. The black people that attack other black people that don't, I will not subscribe to that. I know Brian Tan doesn't subscribe to that. I know Kingface doesn't subscribe to that. We are looking to uplift our community. Okay. Talk about real issues. Talk about books. Let's put together a book club, okay? Let's all go say we're going to go read a Thomas Sowell novel, a Thomas Sowell book on economics and talk about what we learned about what happened when the government started giving us assistance and programs dating all the way back to the to uh, FDR and the Great Depression. Let's talk about real stuff, okay? Oh, no, let's not talk about that. It's not being black. I know I'm going on a rant right now, but genuinely... Everybody's making me sick. Everybody's making me sick. I'm, I, I'm both sides of the aisle. Everybody is making me sick because nobody pauses to think. Everybody wants to call somebody bought and paid. Nobody pauses to use their brain cells anymore to talk about why it is this just appears every four years. I'll answer a couple of more questions and then I'm going to wrap this because I'm reading a really good book right now and I want to get back into it because I'm a little bit of a nerd these days. Um, uh, you're right, you ain't black if you don't vote for crazy old Joe. Yes, I know. Um, somebody saying this is like CIA stuff, social program is, is disgusting. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And we know there have been tons of programs uh, put in the past um, that have done things. Roger Harrison, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Patrick B, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, uh, I appreciate all of you guys supporting me and, and the things that I have to say. Uh, what did you think about what... Leo said about you, he lost me. I don't, guys, for any person that does a video about me, I will tell you across the board, the answer will be the same. Um, first and foremost, I don't watch them. Uh, I might catch one if someone sent it to me. But the second thing is like anybody trying to build a career by being the anti Candace needs to get a life. There's no such thing as an anti career. Like if we could just make a platform just saying, I'm going to make a bunch of videos talking about how much I hate someone and become famous. I would have been the anti Beyonce because I would be a billionaire today. I'd be like, I'm going to be anti Beyonce. And all I'm going to do on YouTube is talk about how much I hate everything Beyonce says and does and make a lot of money because I'm going to be, the there's no such thing, right? There's no anti Beyonce. There's no anti Kanye. Kanye's going to be Kanye. Beyonce is going to be Beyonce no matter how much you hate them. Okay. Candace is going to be Candace no matter how much you hate her. You might get a couple of clicks being the anti Candace, but you're not gonna sustain your career. So why don't you go find, talk about what you care about and the things that you believe in, and not the people that you don't. So that is across the board. Every person that you think you saw something about me, I don't care, literally, literally, I don't lose any sleep over it, doesn't mean anything. I mean, I'm where I am because I don't spend time on stuff like that. Okay, um, God bless you, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Christina, for the um, uh, super chat. I think that's super chat. Um, uh, not all heroes wear capes, thank you very much. Um, thoughts on Twitter fact checking Trump's tweets about mail in voting. I actually didn't see that, but mail in voting is fraud. I've been calling that for the last couple of months. That's the obvious play of the coronavirus. Um, let's talk about why we subscribe to Netflix, but we can't subscribe to ourselves and our communities for the same price. Um, well, listen, it, it could be a conversation about, you know, internal black, black issues. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this unless I can figure out how to do uh, these super chat things. And I really cannot, but I promise you guys, I will try to figure it out for not, uh, for next time. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm sorry that I ranted about how angry I am by uh, about just the narrative that's been going around. Um, but just keep a lookout for it. Don't let the media divide us. You know, sad things happen all the time. I mean, there's a quarter a million of people, a quarter million people every single year are killed in medical errors. Uh, it's a horrible tragedy every time it happens, um, but we don't racialize those things. We don't say let's boycott all doctors. Um, you know, we, we look at those as tragedies, as human errors, um, and we don't allow that to divide us. So I think in any instances where you think any person, no matter what race they are, didn't deserve to die, keep your head on about it. Um, look at things objectively um, and say, is this a whole picture or is this one instance? And usually you will find um, that you are looking at a rare instance and not the thing that happens every single day. Thank you.